So I think we are now live. So thank you all for, for coming. This is uh, wonderful to see so many faculty uh, and students. Uh, we out the faculty outnumber the stu students, which is unusual for these sessions, but that's, that's a good thing. Um, today, we're gonna talk about the comps. Um, as far as the students in the room, I thought what we do, maybe what we'll do is just run around the room, run around the room really quickly with the students. Faculty, just tell just tell everybody what department you're working in, uh, what area, ed leadership or or whatever. And then um, students, just give us a sense of where you are in terms of the comp process. If you if you don't know, it probably means that you're pretty early in the program and you haven't given much thought to the comp, which is totally fine. You shouldn't necessarily be thinking about the comp just yet. Um, but then after that, we'll we'll uh, get a little uh, a little bit more information about what the comp looks like for students. The folks that are the students that are here, um, I asked a couple students who are just finished their comps or in the are getting close to finishing their comps to give us the rundown, so it wouldn't just be faculty talking. But um, anyway, let's just start and maybe let's start with Nate. Yeah. So I'm about a year and a half in. I have my comps tentatively planned for next semester or two, and I plan on doing a review of literature, and I've been working on that, and uh, there's some opportunities to work through some of those pieces in several of my classes. So very much thank you for the support and then feedback on those from the faculty as it's worked in to be aspects of some of my learning already. Okay, Lindley. Hi, I gotta turn the lights on. Okay, there we go. Um, the automatic lights are terrible in my classroom. Uh, my name is Lindley and I have no idea what a comp is, but I decided to just show up anyway. I'm very, very early on in the process. So I think that's all. Uh, Whitney, you wanna go next? Sure, I'm Whitney. Um, I am doing my comp soon. Kelly and I met last week and kind of got our timeline down and I'm hoping for the beginning of December, so. Guru Priya, you've got a, the victory smile on your face. <laughs> You're muted. Yeah. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. Um, hi everyone. I just finished my comms just this last Friday. <laughs> so um, it's uh, it was it was quite a yeah. It took a, it took a bit of a time, but I remember attending some of these sessions when um, Keith hosted these advising sessions. I think last year as well. And so I remember thinking, oh my gosh, how do I do it? What do I do? Um, and so yeah, it's it's been quite right, but it's done. So. <laughs> Good. Manly. So I'm in that ABD phase and yay, comps are done. <laughs> in fact, I was hoping to meet you, Guru Priya, on Monday. And uh, so now it is, and actually I've done my research, so now it's into the coding and serious 500 words a day writing phase. There you go. Soon to be done. Melissa. Hi, I'm brand new to the program, so I haven't even thought about it or started any of it. I'm just kind of here to see some faces and learn more, so yay. Cool. So faculty, just just tell us what your uh, what your space is and um, how your comp went. No, never mind. Uh, Sarah, why don't you start us off? Hi, Sarah Haganaw. I am in the SIFS department, which is the Curriculum Instruction and Foundational Studies. Um, also, and I do teach, and I teach a whole bunch in the doc program too. Julianne. Uh, hi, Julianne Winter. I am also in SIFS, and I typically teach. Um, I don't know, undergrad science methods and uh, some masters in teaching classes, but in the doc program, usually qualitative research is my jam. There you go. Thank you, Kelly. 
Um, I am uh, recently retired from the educational leadership program. So I, I uh, was part of that for about nine years. So that's my background. And she has about 15 doc students right now. So um, <laughs> taking over with the advising. <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Yes. Carl? Happily, happily taking over with advising. Yeah, doesn't sound like retirement to me, Kelly. True. Yeah. True. Well, so uh, Carl Siebert, I hide out in SIFS and I'm the director of the PEMS program and also do the, the Pearl Lab. So I'm the one of the research geeks. There you go. Heather. I, I guess that's what we call it. We hide out in SIFS. <laughs> I am the program coordinator for executive ed leadership, and I primarily teach in that, and I'm the director for the network of leaders and learners. Evelyn? I'm Evelyn Johnson. I'm in the early and special ed department, and I guess I have not taught in the doc program in a while, but when I do, it's um, quantitative methods, everyone's favorite. <laughs> um, yeah. And we have a mystery caller that I don't have an ID for. So whoever just called in, could you just tell us who you are? Because I'm just seeing a phone icon on my thing and a mystery number. It must be a political candidate that inadvertently dialed into our Zoom. Remember to get out and vote. Um, Okay, I, I don't know what to do with that. Anybody have Zoom etiquette down and like- yeah, What is, is it star six or what is the turns off mute when you're on the phone? I can look it up real quick, but it's oh. uh, it's pound six or star six or something like that. Cause she's on mute or he is on mute. And that's how you get unmuted when you're on the phone. Let me look it up. Keith, I think it's the person in charge. You might be able to unmute people too. Yeah. Or mute us. Yeah. Um, I not with the phone. I can't. I can mute all of you, but I don't. <laughs> it seems. Uh, where is it? Star six. So if the, if the person does star six on their phone, it'll unmute their phone. If they can hear me. We'll edit all this out of the movie that we're gonna send Chris Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sit there and go, you people don't know your Zoom. Um, anyway, um, well, wel welcome whoever faculty member or student with an area code 208 in the last three numbers of your phone number 398. Um, uh, so today, what, I, what the, the plan is to just kind of walk through what the comp looks like, try to demystify that a bit for, for everybody. Um, there are three different kind of models for doing the comp. One is to do a review of literature that typically translates into doing chapters one and two. So a, a brief introduction to the problem and a review of literature. Hello, a green phone. That means hey. that you speak. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Tate Castleton. I'm sorry for being such a disruption. <laughs> Welcome Tate. <laughs> Nate was just bad mouthing you before you got here. So um, you want to speak for oh. on this? Well, what did he say? We were just talking about where we are in the program. You, I assume you're about it. You're uh, coming up on your comp too, right? Yes, that's correct. Wonderful. So we're, we're just talking about the comps, um, giving people a sense of what to expect. Um, we have one only one person in here is two people who have finished their comps and so we can have that conversation faculty are here and i i mean i guess one of the things that um that i would say is although we have general guidelines for how people do this it does vary a bit from faculty member to faculty member so people have uh different ideas about how best to facilitate the process the um the three options as they're described in the doctoral handbook are um, a pilot study, 
which is essentially, uh, sorry, I, I started on this before I, and then I saw the green phone and was distracted. Um, the, the, th the three models are, one is to do a review of literature, which is very efficient in that it, it requires that you do a statement of problem and then a review of literature. So chapters one and two of your dissertation typically. The pilot study is for people who want to try a methodology or they want to do some preliminary work before they do their dissertation. That typically, um, but not always, includes a briefer version of chapters one and two. So it's kind of a, a condensed version of the review of literature and the statement of problem. And it focuses much more, um, much more on the research methodology. Um, so people that have had um, pilot studies or were really concerned about whether they could analyze their data um, often go with a pilot study. They get some pilot data and then they work with their committee to work on a coding system or they work on a quantitative analysis. Um, but it gives them an opportunity to play with some data before the big dissertation data set rolls in. Um, the, th the third option, which is kind of a hybrid of both of these, uh, is to have your committee members write questions for you. And uh, this is one that Catherine Wright likes to use. And what she does is have the committee members write questions that tend to be uh, either focused on a review of literature or a methods question. So you get a little bit of both. So um, Jade Thompson, who just finished her comp, did hers. Julianne, were you on that one? Oh, OK. Um, I think Peter was, but it, they basically they had uh, three questions about her area of research, and then um, Peter Bodeker wrote her a, a quant methods question because she'll be doing quant methods. So those are the kind of the three options. I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but I will. Um, there really are kind of, uh, in my experience, has been there are really two outcomes that come from the comp. One is, um, this looks really, really good. I would probably beef up this section and this section and we'll see it in the dissertation phase. So it's a pass with, with some revision required. The second one is, um, this is fine, uh, but I really didn't, I don't have enough information to go on to, to judge this very well. So I need to need you to flesh this out and I'd like to see it before we give you the uh, seal of approval. Um, and so th those are the two primary uh, outcomes or the two, the two outcomes that I know of. And I will just point out that I did not mention a third option where we fail you and kick you out of the program because that has never happened in my experience. So I've been, I've been here a dozen years and, and uh, have yet to see the, oh my gosh, uh, what is this? Um, this isn't a comp. So people are, I think students are well prepared when they get into the comp phase. Um, and it generally turns out well for, for everybody. Um, did I, did I misstate that faculty who have, has anyone seen anybody like uh, get to a point where we're like, what happened there? See, no, no one shaking their head or waving their hands. Let, let me tell about the really horror story about the comp. Um, so, so I just, I, I hope that puts you a little bit at ease. Those of you who are really new, Melissa and Lindley, Lindley in particular, you're gonna have time to think about your comp and another, a year from now when we're doing this same meeting um, in the fall of 2021, you'll go, oh yeah, I remember this again. And so it'll, it'll seem a little more familiar and you'll feel a little bit more, um, you'll be even more ready to think about the comp. So what I thought I would do is, uh, I know Manley did uh, a review of literature and I thought what I would do is, and, and Guru Priya, you did, you did a review of literature as well, right? So we have two students that, that um, went that route. And I thought what, it, what would be useful for students who are going to, um, who are thinking about that route, um, maybe give us a summary of the process, uh, things that I haven't mentioned, things that they should be thinking about. Does that make sense? 
And Manly, I know you're on a, you've got another meeting that you need to go to. So I'm going to have you start us off, if you don't mind. Okay, well, this was uh, a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, because um, I had, um, because my research project crashed and burned before I got it out the gate. So I'm going from what um, that comp was a little ways back. Anyways, you know, it's really related to your research, of course. And first of all, I would say, you know, you have a good relationship with your chair and they're not going to let you go into this uh, without their feeling that you are prepared for it. And second of all, your that lit review will have had been looked about at by other committee members. And if they had some um, real um, reservations or whatever comments they had about whatever part of that review they looked at before your comps, then you should be addressing that before you go into your comp, okay? So your lit review is very much tied to your um, project and they're not looking for you to know everything about everything. They're looking for you to be well grounded in the essential literature that is related to your project. You don't feel like you need to know everything about everything, but that you can speak authoritatively to things that are um, you should have been looking at related to your project. So I think that it helps to know that you don't need to know everything. You just need to know, you need to be comfortable about foundations related to the research that you're doing. Comfortable in a way that you can talk about that, answer questions about that. It doesn't mean you have to answer every single question fully, but enough to know that you've navigated in these waters and um, you have um, the expertise of a new and upcoming peer, and um, which is not total expertise, right? But a good foundation. And so I'm, I hope that's helpful. And I would really be in good uh, communicating with your committee, uh, of course, particularly with your chair, but all of your committee members, because each member has a, an area of expertise related to your project. So in the, those areas, get feedback from them before you go into your comp. If they see holes or have questions, get those things re resolved, um, you know, before the date and, and you'll do very well. They're there to see you succeed. They're excited about your project. They're, um, they're all on your team. So listen to your team members. Thanks, Manly. And, and I, that one of the things that Manly said that I think is, is important to emphasize is um, some of us went through doctoral programs where they had this uh, crazy system where they'd lock you in an office for eight hours or 16 hours where you had to sit and you um, you know, you, you could eat and drink, but that was it. And then uh, occasionally knock on the door and get a bathroom run. But then like it was this super secure, super high pressure testing situation. Um, that is not the system here. You had that too, Carl? <laughs> oh my gosh, everybody did. We have more than one people. That's insane. It was brutal. It was absolutely brutal. I was no internet, no anything. I had a, a blank computer empty and I was given five hours to complete a test. Wow. And it was up or out. Um, about 20% of the people didn't make it through that, that test. Yeah, it was brutal. And then they had no recourse. There was no second uh, pass. Choose another program was their suggestion. <laughs> yeah it was a small program obviously <laughs> but but yeah that was their that was their approach heather was that yours your system your u of i did it that way too yeah um yeah we had a 
uh, blank. Uh, we had a proctor actually in five hours and write it out. Wow, I'm gonna edit all this out because this is this is just making me anxious and I've already <laughs> my time. So I, I, we don't have that system here. It's we have we have went to a more humane model. Um, my point is simply, you're not going to get locked in a room. Um, you're going to have uh, you, you want to to actually access your committee members and get feedback on the way. We're not looking for a document uh, that's not really in good shape. We're looking for something that's more of a uh, a document to show that you can can actually do your review of literature if that's the route you're going or um, think through your method section and pull that off. So, um, but I, I wanna make sure that I'm not speaking. That That is my personal model. Um, does Are there other faculty that have had students that would say you're not allowed to talk to anybody? That well, and I would just add Keith, like look at, uh, you know, I have more hair than you and Carl, but we, you know, like we, we have gray hair and, you know, we went through a while ago, like we're not dragging sticks through the dirt anymore. I mean, we've evolved a little bit. I don't think the uh, Florida has evolved at all. Have they Carl? No, no, they're still doing exactly the same thing. <laughs> they're not going to ever change. <laughs> so, um, so that's, that's the review of literature, the, the version of this oftentimes people some some committee some faculty like to get the committee together and walk through have the students kind of lay out what they're going to do and then the faculty uh, the committee members can actually chime in and say you should be looking at here here's some primary sources in this space and here are some primary sources in this space it varies a lot and i i guess i'm i'm going to have um faculty I think we have a small enough Brady Bunch screen here. The, how many of you faculty encourage students to have a pre-comp meeting? Okay, so yeah, so it's, I mean, it's, it's a good way to get, make sure that you're on the right page, that the student's on the right page. Um, so I, I do want to get Guru Prius because she take on the on the comp. She did the review of literature as well, and um, more information is better, I think. Um, yes, I so I did the lit review, and I feel like there was in the beginning I did think about okay, which of the three methods would probably suit um, what I wanted to do, and I'll be honest, the minute I heard the third option as exam or test, I just thought, no, I don't want to do that. And I think especially because this time last year as well, Keith, um, you, had a, you had a meeting where you had like doctoral students who had already finished their comps and who were about to do their comps. And I think, yeah, you mentioned a little something about the trauma of the exam. And so I, I don't know how somehow at that point in time, I just thought I, I don't want to do that. Um, but I chose the lit review mainly because like for my topic, um, it, it, it was like I had to look at two sort of two different areas of interest and try and like pull what was done in this area and also in this area and try and I mean, they're not totally different, but I had to try and make a connection between the two. And so in that sense, it made sense, it made more sense for me to do a review of literature so that I could say this is what's been done. These are the gaps. And so this is why I want to study this and this is what I'm proposing. So it, it's not just that I didn't want to do the exam, but it also did make more sense um, to do a lit review. So. Cool. And you, did you? And I, I just also want to say, oh. No, go for it. No. I was just curious. Well, if, I just, I just also. The delay is killing us. Go for it, Guru Priya. I will sit quietly. Oh, I know. Uh, no, I just, I, qu very quickly, I just want to say I second what um, what Manny also said about always be talking to and be in touch with your um, advisor or your chair or your both, you know, your chairs in my case, at least, um, and also generally your committee. Um, and so in that sense, I guess, you know, then you won't have any surprises because, you know, when you are regularly in touch with them and keep sending them, you know, things to read, they can also give you feedback. And so then, you know, where you stand. So, yeah. 
so I, I wanted to use, you said it and something about your proposal. Um, did you have your proposal meeting shortly after slash incorporated into your comp defense? I did, yeah, I did. It was, um, I did both basically in one meeting. Yep. And how, how common and, is that? I mean, that how <laughs> common is that for-, for Sorry, no, go ahead. I, I wanna ask the faculty how often they try to roll those into the same meeting. So Evelyn's giving me a thumbs up. Julianne is, Kelly is, Sarah is, Carl's doing some other hand motion that's <laughs> not anything that I'm gonna comment on. No, it's, it's just a 50-50 uh, kind of thing. Um, Heather, you combined, you, you, you had the, uh, the proposal, right? And Jen, you've done a ton of advising. How often do you have the proposal meeting combined with the comp defense? Most of the time. So it, it's, um, I've, I've, I've tended to do that just because I've gone, uh, I've evolved as an advisor to realize that if I don't have the method in mind, the review of literature tends to be misguided or not as targeted as it needs to be. And so I've gone down paths as an advisor where I've thought uh, the review of literature was spot on. And then we get into the laying out the design of the study and realizing that it's not a really good, it's, the alignment isn't perfect. So um, now I tend to have that meeting and have the, me have the methods very much in mind before we do our thing um, or do the comp. So Whitney is relatively unique. Um, we don't have a ton of people going with the pilot study kind of model. Um, I love it as a methodologist, but um, I don't love it enough to make all my students do it. So um, we, it is what it is. So I thought we, it'd be good to hear Whitney describe her comp. So we have a, a sense of what a pilot study looks like. So I couldn't necessarily find a survey that like incorporated all of the information that I wanted to gather for my study. And so, um, and I'm looking at principals understanding of special education when they come out of their principal preparation programs. Um, and so I've built a survey and um, Kelly and I have been working to identify former school principals because I'd for my research, I'd like to survey current school principals in districts in the state of Idaho. Um, but to pilot my survey, I want to, I'm reaching out to former school principals to have them go through it to make sure it makes sense. And that what I'm asking is actually what I'm hoping to get information about and then to get feedback from them on, did I, does it make sense? Did I ask the right questions? Were there any other areas as principals that maybe I needed to address? Um, and then kind of look at that and, and write that up for my comp. Does that make sense? It's, it's a great, great uh, kind of a prototypic use of the pilot study version of the comp, which is why it's perfect. I will, we will probably not let Whitney graduate so she can do this same talk next year and the year after that. <laughs> year after that. Yeah, it sounds like so much fun. I'll just be in limbo. <laughs> Kelly is protesting. Um, but yeah, Kelly wants to retire at some point. <laughs> that's, that's what the, that's what the, the pilot study version does for you is it helps you get your instrumentation or get your methods kind of locked down. Um, and thank you, the three students who were able to, to walk us through that. Nate, you're the, Nate and Tate, do you guys, uh, you're feeling super calm now, right? About the comp? Um, <laughs> it, there's a lot of work that goes involved with that, but um, I feel like with our quant and qual methods classes, because you're, the courses are made with an effort to look at something that you're interested in and start to go down that road of producing um, an actionable research project with both methodologies in mind that it that's why at this point I am I haven't fainted so you know they're falling over just because I feel like I've been able to look at it from one perspective and uh, and put it across the good mind and 
I'm redoing it essentially with all those critiques in mind and a new perspective. And so I feel like I'll have worked with the concepts and materials enough by the time I get to that point uh, that I should be okay. There's still some unknowns probably around like the specifics of who you call to make that happen and uh, making sure I know, ex I think I know who's on my committee, but like I haven't seen a piece of paper with everyone's name on it. And like kind of just more of the te technical processes to get to that point. And then just the, in the time of COVID to set those appointments and see the people at, at the necessary points to make sure I'm following through, so. Perfect. Melissa, you, unlike Lind Lindley left, not because she was panicked, she <laughs> had to teach her class. So that was not a, I'm a first year student and I'm out of here. That was just, uh, that's totally something else. Uh, do, do you have a, better feel for it or are you, you're still not going to think about this because you're doing coursework right now? Um, you know, I think it's always good to be thinking ahead because I like to work smarter than harder. So um, I'm hoping that by learning some of this, it'll help me kind of navigate where I'm headed. Um, I'm meeting with my advisor on Friday. So I'm not really, haven't really narrowed down exactly what I'm researching just yet, but I kind of have an idea. So I think I mean, it's always good to know where you're headed. And so it's helpful, um, even though there's lots of questions that I'm gonna have, I'm sure, but at least to just kind of understand part of the process and just be really thinking ahead of what I wanna research and how I wanna get to that point. So, so it's helpful. Good. So what else do, are there questions or what did I not bring up in, in this process that I should, those of you who've done this process a couple of times? Are there things that I should have primed students to prepare for? Or are there questions that you have that you'd like to throw out there? Can I add, just give a suggestion? Sure. Um, I would say uh, use your committee. You know, that your committee is there to help you. So really use your committee and um, there to, to be supportive and help think about things that you have that you maybe didn't think about and even the feedback you get in a comps is there to help you complete the best research you can possibly complete so it's you know look at it as a learning opportunity really um, but yeah use you know don't do it completely alone uh, use your committee great advice I'm just wait timing, Kelly. I've learned you have to wait, you have to multiply it by five times. So it's, it's like a minute and a half of wait time. Feels longer, doesn't it? <laughs> it doesn't. And uh, Jen is clapping because she is the uh, Zoom, Zoom master, has, has had more of these meetings than anyone on the planet. Evelyn or Julianne, you guys have finished a bunch of students. Uh, tips for success. Well, I hate giving advice that's gonna sound cliched because I'm sure you're hearing this in all your classes, but like everything else, the, um, you know, what your comp looks like is really depends on what your research looks like. So Whitney's was a good example of the pilot. I, I'm, I have two students who I'm, really trying to get wrapped up in there with final dissertation writing so we can have them graduate in May. And um, one did a pilot study for the same reason, like she, um, she was uh, Megan Payne, um, she was doing single case um, research and she didn't, she was actually making up both the intervention and an assessment. So um, there was a lot of stuff to work through on that. So she ran a pilot to be able to, to do that. And then um, uh, Carrie Semmelroth was the other person I worked with that was years ago now, um, who did a pilot kind of for the same reason. And, but it was more around the methods because um, we were, there wasn't a lot 
out in the research to guide how to analyze um, some of the data we were collecting around teacher observation. And so in order to like practice that skill set, um, we did a pilot study so that she could work through whether that was the right methodology. And so for them, it made sense, but I've had over the years students who have responded to questions. And then I, I guess I was gonna ask you a question, Keith, like for students who are doing the article, um, the three article approach, what does the comp look like there? Yeah, I mean, again, we have um, limited number of people, so they've all kind of gone through the um, counselor ed model. Um, and what it ends up looking like is um, they end up writing a comp that's a review of literature that ends up getting submitted, or at least historically has gotten submitted and published. Um, so they do kind of a conceptual framework. And in that, um, they apparently, you know, counselor ed has outlets that will take uh, more of a conceptual framework, the idea of that. And then their, um, so that tends to be their comp. And then their second, their second article tends to be um, some sort of study of a particular aspect of that conceptual framework. And, and um, that also is um, within both of those two phases, the, the first two articles tend to be um, a lot of hands-on from the advisor. And it's not until a third, the third article is really uh, a, another intervention or another um, study that looks at a different aspect of the, of the conceptual framework that laid out. And that one's probably, um, well, it's certainly more independently driven than, than the, the first two asp the two first two parts, but it, it um, I could, I could see a person doing a review of literature um, and then still using the, in the, in the third, in a three article um, component, I could see a person using this, the pilot study as their second article. And I, so I, I don't think it necessarily defines that, but it's it's the way it's been done in the past in the way Counselor Ed does, does it is they'll have the conceptual framework, the development of a conceptual framework, which becomes their chapters one and two. And that is actually an article that they submitting and uh, they've done a great oh. job getting those published actually. And then Carl and I were on a committee, um, Elizabeth Schneidwind, um, and she ended up doing a three article dissertation. Hers was slightly different because she already had a project going on. So her comps were a lit review, but then she like took pieces of the lit review to be the supporting literature in each one of her three articles. Am I remembering that correctly, Carl? Yeah, yeah, that's how she did it. She was taking stuff she did in one of her courses as her topic, and then she turned that into a three article dissertation. Yeah. And one of her articles actually ended up being a methodology piece. So you could also think about one an article being a methodology piece. She um, created a way to video capture um, people responding to surveys in ASL. Um, and it's the coolest it really is um, nice <laughs> so cool and i'm yeah. like you have to submit this to a qualitative research journal so um so she has that and then she has two um kind of research articles but she took the lit review that she did for her comps and used it to support different pieces so i think it could look kind of super different yeah and it's it's great that you have two that you both described several different ones because it's it's um yeah, I think you can. I think you can make the three article, uh, the comp within a three article framework work any number of ways. So Jen, you've done a bunch of uh, advising. You want to give us a student say tips for success in successfully comping, if that's a verb. She's mowing her yard. <laughs> if I was to offer one suggestion sure. for those of you that are getting started, is that if you could, if you could carve, figure out how much time you can carve out each week, and then make that the priority over everything else. So don't go too exaggerated or anything like that, but just say during this time of the week, during these hours, 
I am going to only do my dissertation and just be so disciplined that that happens every week. It's a lot harder to do, of course, during this craziness of all this stuff going on. But truly, I think that's the biggest challenge for a lot of people is that they let other things interrupt that block of time and then they start falling behind or not keeping up with their own schedule. So it's it's tr trying to figure out how much you can really carve and then just force yourself. Even if you even if you're just not having a writer's block and you just sit at the screen and that's the only thing you're allowed to do is your dissertation in some form or fashion, even if it's just reading what you've already read, those hours become such a habit that you'll be able to stay on track. Good advice. Good advice for all of us trying to publish now. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could follow my own advice. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Jen, Jen is doing her having her kitchen remodel, so she's not talking because it's it's uh, people banging on banging on things, which I think we're used to having dogs barking with Jen. But um, carpentry, a new a new thing, but carving out time and keeping a regular schedule is, uh, she also mentioned having accountability partners. So uh, I know that Whitney has, do you, are you working with Chris and with Manly Whitney? Um, Manly and I have met a couple of times where Guru Priya is gonna meet with us too. And then I've been trying to get Chris, but uh, he's teaching and doing all the things this semester. <laughs> Yes. So, uh, yeah, but we, he and I have kept in touch too. Great, great advice though, to, to, uh, connect with each other. Most of us went through grad school with, um, people that are now our lifetime friends and it's, it's, uh, misery loves company. I'm not sure if that's the right phrase, but it, there is just something that you, you all go through the same level of stress. One of my best buds from grad school, um, said, make sure you get a, get a, this was pre-internet and pre-phones where you took phone pictures of stuff. Make sure you get a copy of your responses. So I've, I, after I finished writing my comp, I went and did photocopies of them. And, and then a week later, I read what I wrote and I was almost certain I was going to be kicked out because it was the most incoherent blah. You know, I was like, I don't even know what this means. And I, I, in theory, wrote it. Um, but we had an we had an oral defense where you could uh, you could sa save your skin by explaining what you were trying to say. Um, so it worked out it worked out reasonably well. But um, anyway, so uh, on a typewriter, wow, <laughs> she's getting her she's uh, thrashing me. It, yeah, I will admit that I was uh, I was not able to uh, surf, surf the internet for answers to my questions because the internet didn't exist when I did my comp. So, and there you go. Um, anyway, so uh, any other advice or tips, um, things that people should know about the comps? Well, I'll just add one thing, and I think um, maybe, Melissa, this might be a new thing for you, but for the majority of you, I think you've heard this soapbox from probably a bunch of us, um, but it goes along with what Carl's suggesting with that two hours a week type of thing. Start getting yourself organized in some way in terms of where your literature is within those two hours also, or maybe I'll, well, I'm not going to bend Carl's rules, so maybe you do that outside of the two hours. So take 15 minutes to get organized, whether that's electronically which I would highly encourage. Um, it took me about a year to transfer from hard copy to PDF and PDF is lovely, but give your, again, it's just like that practice. You have to practice reading online, to practice taking notes, et cetera. Um, because otherwise you'll end up with what was me at my comps was five big plastic bins <laughs> of my articles. And that's, that's kind of, you know, a good bonfire. How about we put it that way? Um, so just think about that organization piece and, you know, as you continue to read in those hours you've set aside, just write yourself a little memo on what is interesting to you, what's surprising. And if there's an article that you read that has nothing to do with what you are interested in, or like, it's like way out of your universe, don't worry about it and don't, 
worry about keeping it long term. I'll say that really quietly. <laughs> but just just keep that in mind um, to keep organized as you read because um, it'll help you in the long run, especially with your comps. I would totally second that. I go over reference managers in my class because I think it's so worth it. I was the same as Sarah. Like I remember I'm looking up. I remember over my desk, I had piles and piles and piles of paper that literally like avalanche on me one day. Um, and so I finally put everything in a reference manager. I really like Mendeley because you can take notes that are then searchable. So you can write yourself notes. There are lots of other um, applications, lots of other ways to, to do that. Um, also, um, Sarah and I learned the three, two, one. Do you remember it, Sarah? Keep all of your work in three different places, um, in two different modes at least, and one should be on the cloud. At least one should be on the cloud. And that is huge. I went to Best Buy at two o'clock in the morning. I swear to you, like just crying, like crying because I lost my dissertation. And I was like, they were like, do you want anything else on here? I'm like, just find my dissertation. Please just find my dissertation. It was sad. I lived in a college town. They were very used to it, but like, yeah. So make sure that you're saving your work. Okay, so box off. And I think Keith, isn't that one of the subjects coming up for one of these Wednesday chats? Yes, and I think maybe we'll just, we'll make Julianne come in and talk about Mendeley and some other things. We have a librarian coming in next Wednesday to talk about search engines and stuff like that. And may, that was, um, I didn't prime her to talk about, you know, reference storage systems, but um, I might just actually plant a seed in Julianne uh, to ask her about whether we should have a librarian or should we have faculty? I think it would be great to have a librarian. I mean, I I am one of those people where like once I find my thing, I don't go searching for other things. There might be other things out there that are way better than what I'm using, but now I'm entrenched in my system. I also am that way when I drive around Boise, like I only know one way to get to places. And so like if a, a road is closed, I'm screwed, right? <laughs> I Once I find my thing, that is where I am. So I think it would be worth having a librarian come in because I, I could learn from it. Okay. That was the, that was the plan. I figured they might know some stuff that like, because I think most of us do like you're doing, Julianne, which is this works and I'm not going to look for something to make my life more complicated. I'm going to look for less, less in my life right now. Um, so that, th so the plan, um, and I'll send an email to everyone. No letting people know that next next month we'll be having um, someone from the library come and talk to us about search engines and ways that uh, efficient ways to do searches the week after or the month after that it's december so nothing says happy holidays like something about data reference storage and machine uh software but um that's our gift to you as students uh mendeley and other things uh and and then uh, and then we'll just we'll break for the for the break and get back at it in the in the new year um, after the vaccine is already developed because I think it's for it's not going to happen, <laughs> isn't it? No. no. Um, anyway, uh, anything else uh, in the last eight minutes? Because I'll, I'll just otherwise I'll just have a shorter video. I'm sure this movie will be about. Uh, a million gigabytes, right? Hey, Keith, it's Andy Johnson. I'm out here driving on my cell phone, and I heard you say that there's going to be a vaccine. I, I definitely want to hold you to that. Yes, use my words against me. We will, uh, we will have that vaccine shortly. And uh, Andy, hang up the phone. You shouldn't be uh, doing a Zoom meeting while you're driving. That, that's just a whole new level of irresponsibility. I shamed him. I texted him and told him he was, should join this meeting. <laughs> wow. I'm going to. Thank you, thank you sweetheart. I'm, I'm glad you chimed in on that because that's exactly why I'm doing this because I had made every plan to join this thing at 4 30. And then, you know, schools what schools are and I was like ah I gotta get on that and Evelyn text me like well I'm gonna dial into this thing and listen and everything about storage of places I mean I am the worst mine is like scattered around in various notes 
uh, starred in, in Google Scholar or something, which I hope I can retrieve. It's a mess, so I got to get on it. Well, you only have two months to wait. So next next month is search engines. The week the month after that, December. Then you'll all be set up with your reference storage machines or software. It's going to be amazing. I'm looking forward to it. Hi, Andy. <laughs> Hello. I would say also check out EndNote. EndNote's EndNote's kind of my passion. I love EndNote. So. But I would, I'm really interested in, in hearing a little bit about Mandalay because I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. And I, I suspect that um, people who are teaching like the, the uh, I know Hannah Calvert, who's teaching your program evaluation class right now. She's a huge Mendeley fan. I bet she's, she's probably pushing that heavy in that class just because she gets a small commission every time somebody uses it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, but um, so Carl is looking for his EndNote uh, royalty, and he'll have to take on a new class to to get that. Um, but anyway, hey, it's uh, there's five minutes. Does anybody have anything else? Otherwise, I'm gonna call this bad boy. Any comments, questions, concerns, or advice? I, I would just one last thing I would suggest that don't just rely on your committee. If you're, you're not getting what you need from your committee and there's a particular question that you're chasing, reach to someone else on the faculty. I mean, that's, that's kind of why we're here is to help all the students. And so I wouldn't be shy at all about reaching out to anybody uh, to get your answers that you need. I mean, it's, you're driving this monster thing to finish off. And if your committee's overworked, or not not giving you what you need um, as far as a particular topic, ask away. Good advice. And good advice to end on because now they can all shoot Carl an email and ask about what they need to do differently or what they can get from other faculty. No, it's great advice and <laughs> I hope you all uh, People seem more than happy to reach out. I have had ha, yet to have had people say, I'm, in, I'm uh, unwilling to ask faculty more questions. So we clearly have a very welcoming faculty, which is good. Um, I'm gonna let you all go, enjoy the rest of your evening. And um, if I don't see you before next month, I'll see you second Wednesday a month from now. It was great seeing everybody. Thank you guys. Bye, Andy.